Today's video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG, where you can get all of your bundles and playset splits for any upcoming sets when available. Check them out at TripleSleeveTCG.com. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard, and today we got the boy Eugene, uh, best Dragon Empire deck in the game, obviously. Um, it's got dinosaurs. That's that's like the best reason to play this deck, honestly. Um, so yeah, Eugene, um, let's just get right into the, the deck profile here. So our starter is gonna be Bart. Um, so Bart's got some guns, which is cool, you know? So shiny boy there. Uh, what's your name, Nigel? We got Nigel Thornberry as our grade one. So we're already off to an amazing start for this deck. Uh, Nigel's skill is when you ride, um, excuse me, Rander on top of it, you can soul charge. This deck uses soul. So soul charging is good. So you basically have to run this ride chain for Eugene. So then we go into Randor. So Randor's skill is when you ride Eugene on top of him, you get to draw a card and then pick a card from your drop zone and add it to your soul. So that's pretty cool because, you know, using the soul right away when you ride Eugene is good. Um, Randor's other effect, we don't run in the main deck, but it gets 5k and it helps you soul charge as well. But for the most part, you don't have to really worry about that in this deck. So we're just going to kind of keep the ball rolling here. Going right into Eugene. Uh, Eugene's skill is act once per turn. You can rest two rear guards uh, to pick one opponent's rear guard and retire it. That's right. You got to lose two rear guards, basically, rest them to retire one whole thing. It's amazing. Second skill is if you retired something this turn, you soul blast five and you look at the top number of cards of your deck equal to the number of your opponent's open rear guard circles and you can call them to your board. And if you don't want to call them, you put the rest into your soul. So if you blow up your opponent's board, you look at the top five and they're all triggers, you can just shove all five into your soul and lose five triggers from your deck. It's absolutely bonkers. Anyways, uh, yeah, it fills your board, uh, hopefully. So it's got like kind of a gold paladin aesthetic if you know gold paladin were like bad, like Agravain was. Um, so, that's basically what the deck does, but um, the whole focus, I feel like, with this deck is you got to be more control-focused. So less about the Soul Blast 5 call stuff and more about the rest two things to pop a card for 10k. He also gets 10k if I didn't mention that. Um, so you got to kind of think of Eugene as a super control deck um, as much as you possibly can. So that's if you really want to play this deck, that's you just got to make it a control deck. So off to that main deck. We got three copies of Eugene. Uh, Persona writing is basically the only way this deck is good uh, because otherwise there's nothing else that helps your units improve in terms of power. Uh, being able to Persona ride, then rest two things for a 33k Vanguard is dope. Um, it just kind of sucks that it happened to be Eugene, which is that Vanguard getting three, 33k, but hey, you know, we got to balance it out here i guess so you know making it fair so three copies of eugene uh the only other grade threes we're running in the deck are the four copies of tribash this was our first uh big old dino we got for the deck so tribash's skill is when your vanguard attacks you uh if your opponent has two or less rear guards you move it to soul and you give your vanguard a crit until the end of that battle so fills up your soul which is dope and you can, you know, give Eugene a crit. So Eugene can be somewhat threatening during this game. Um, mostly it's there's just the fact for the soul, but also mostly for the fact of the crit. It's just a good card. Um, since Eugene lets you call the top X amount of cards uh, randomly, you can kind of just throw this behind Eugene. You could also just call this uh, to be a rest target through Eugene's skill, rest it, retire something. And then when it comes time for Eugene's attack, you just shove this into the soul. Eugene gains a crit. So good card. Good card for Eugene. Also really good card for Overlord, too, if you guys were wondering. All right, next up for our next Dino Boy, we got a uh, Strong Fortress Dragon Gibrabrachi. Gibrabrachi. So Gibrabrachi's skill is if your vanguard is Eugene, you can soul blast one to rest this unit, 
and you pick one of your opponent's rear guards. Yeah, and you retire it. Yep. So then at the beginning of your battle phase, if uh, your opponent has one or less rear guards, you stand this and this gets 5k. So it's dope because even if you don't rest it um, and your opponent has one or less rear guards, you can just give it the 5k because, you know, you got to complete the skill as much as possible. So 15k beater, you can restand if you use it for Eugene's cost to retire something. It rests itself for a soul blast to just keep on like that control consistency of retiring stuff. It's a pretty decent card. It makes sense it's Eugene support. Um, you know, Eugene and all these dinosaur cards, man. It's just pretty uh pretty cool. Just love love those uh that dino support. All right. We kind of have to take advantage of, of as many beat sticks as we can. So we're running um Oshikuni. So Oshikuni is literally just like if your opponent has two or less rear guards, he gets 5k. Super simple skill. Some overlord decks are running this too, but um beat sticks, you know. You just gotta take advantage of like some 15k attackers when you can, especially I probably said this in other videos. 15k beaters are really good in this early format. Um, since a lot of the meta seems to be just about the numbers that you can hit. Um, so yeah, uh there is a grade three that does pretty much a similar thing. So instead of a 15k, you could have an 18k beater. The only issue with that is like it's a grade three as opposed to a grade two with intercept. So you just kind of have to make a decision there with what you would prefer. That's it for grade twos. So we're going off into the grade ones. PGs. So we got a twin bunker dragon, a buckler dragon. Sorry, I almost had a buddy fight reference there. Uh, it's Sentinel. So you have four in a deck. Uh, when this is placed on guard circle, pick one of your units. Cannot be hit. If you have two or more in hand, you discard a card. Good PG. Uh, next, we got more Eugene support, basically, but it could be used for anything, but the really good Eugene card. We've got uh, Drag Ritter Idurius. Idurius. If your opponent's rear guard is retired this turn, you can perform one of the following for a counter blast. You can either have this unit gain 10k, or you can move to soul and pick another one of your opponent's grade 2 or greater rear guards and retire it. So you can help fill the soul for Eugene. Um, retires another rear guard, so it makes it easier to kind of use that skill to create a new board. Um, or you can just have it, you know, be a 15k beater like the rest of the grade twos. Um, or just a booster. A 15k booster is nice as well. But uh, you definitely want to run for this uh, really, really good support card for Eugene. So if you're going to build a Eugene deck, might as, well, might as well run the good stuff, right? All right, next up running three copies of Stealth Dragon, uh, how do you pronounce Kiz and Reiji? Kiz and Reiji? I believe so. Skill is once per turn, uh, act, count blast one, soul blast one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as this, and retire it. What I like about this card a lot is a problem I was having with my Eugene deck was that I didn't really have a way to proc off the second ability without having to rest things if I didn't have other cards that just retired stuff. So if I didn't have Geobrachio or whatever it's called, uh, Gibrabrachio, um, and I only had Eugene to work with and I didn't want to rest any units, uh, this was a good uh, alternative because you just throw it down, Counter Blast, Soul Blast, retire something, and then you already have the conditions to kind of like go from there. Uh, you can combo it off with Iduris, so you can retire something with this. Then move this to soul, retire grade two or greater. So you only lost, you know, you get your soul back that you paid for the cost. And it kind of has some bit of a combo in there as well. So I do like Kizen Reiji in this deck. Uh, helps with the control aspect that uh, Eugene's trying to go for. Uh, lastly, for the grade ones, we got a Stealth Fiend Shigamanago. Shigamanago, Shigamango. So when uh, your opponent's rear guard is retired during your turn, you can retire Shigamango, and then you can look at the top card of your deck, and you can call it, 
And if you don't want to call it, you just put it in your soul. So if you want to have a way to fill your soul easy, you can use Shiga Mango, Retire It, Soul Charge, or you can rush Shiga Mamango, uh, Retire It, uh, Three Genes Effect, obviously. Retire something. Then since something was retired, we retire this, look at top card, call it to replace it, so now you have a standing unit back. So it's got some versatility with Eugene, so you want to kind of like use it a little bit. It's kind of iffy. I don't like that it retires itself. I wish it moved to Soul. That would have been great. I feel like I don't know why Bushy really limited on the Eugene support being so good. Like, I really don't feel like it would have made that big of an issue just to move to Soul instead of it being retired, but maybe there was some like synergy when it came to premium that would have made it too good. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's kind of weird for D-Series. So, but hopefully maybe there'll be better Eugene support then I can get rid of this card. So looking forward to that. But as far as like not having to use too many resources and this being just kind of like a rest target, it's decent. It's an 8K vanilla, so it can be a decent booster for those 15K beaters hitting those 23 magic numbers. It's the best we can do. So onto the triggers, we got Drag Veda, uh, over trigger, you guys know, remove it from the game, draw a card, and then 100 million power. When you drive check it, it gets the additional effect of restanding your Vanguard. So that's nice, especially if you Persona rode that turn and you got that 33k Eugene, you can just restand it and you got another 33k Vanguard swinging at your opponent. If they didn't really plan for that, but you know, no one ever plans for the over trigger. So, um, yeah, uh, better. I think this is better than doing the um, the Cradle Mental because there's no reason to stack up that much power. I feel like taking advantage of more drive checks is better for the deck. Uh, on to some more new cards. We got front triggers. Starting for the front triggers just because there's no real defensiveness going on in this deck whatsoever. So you got to be really aggressive and really defensive at the same time. And I feel like this front really makes up for that. So if your opponent's at grade 3, gets 5k shield. 20k shield, it's a front trigger. So if you drive check it or damage check it, your front row's going to be beefy or harder to hit. I definitely think Eugene can take advantage of the fronts in this deck. Also, the draw triggers um, deck you out because <laughs> you're soul charging and going through your deck so fast. Uh, I don't think draw triggers are helpful for this deck at all. Um, next up, we're just running some crits. So we got four of the crit from the trial deck, Zone or Zoni, Zon, Zone, uh, and then Conduct Spark Dragon. So seven critical triggers for the deck because surprise quit crits win games. If you use Tri Bash on Eugene, uh, this card, if you use Tri Bash on Eugene to give Eugene an extra crit, you know, you just uh, get another crit for game. Pretty, pretty fun stuff there. Got to threaten your opponents with crits, so I'm going to try and run those. Um, and on to the rest of our triggers, which is the last four. More dinosaurs. Uh, Parasolus. So cute. This guy looks like it's just hatched out of its little egg out of its nest. It's a little cutie. I love this heel. Uh, yeah, dino, dino deck, dino theme triggers. Let's go. All right, so that was pretty much it for the Eugene profile. All I can really say is the main goal of the deck is you want to ride into Eugene. I'm going to use this as proxy soul for when you ride into it. The minute you ride it, you're going to meet the conditions for the soul blast. So from that point on, it's really about kind of getting rid of your opponent's board. So you want to start calling the stuff that's going to early game that's going to help you with that. So like... Good call targets are going to be Shigamango, um, Idris, and the Dino Boy, Keeper Brachio. So basically, when you go right into Eugene for the first time, these are going to be your three main targets there for resting and stuff. So this, you rest it. You can just bring it back. This, you can also use its own skill to pop more stuff. This pop stuff, this helps kind of fill your board or fill your soul if you need to. So these are all, they're going to be the go-to targets if your opponent has a board early. Um, if they don't have a board early, you don't have to worry about that or worry about that. You just got to go use Eugene's Soul Blast skill, get your board back, 
hopefully, because another problem is your top five are triggers, and then you just soul charged a bunch of triggers, lost triggers in your deck, and now you have no field. So now you have to call things from your hand and make a field. It's it's just a weird deck to kind of manage. Has a lot of luck involved in it in terms of its effectiveness. So I think that's why in terms of performance, it's bad. <laughs> um, consistency is just Eugene's main problem. I think the other thing is that the way its skill is written where you have to retire something to do the Soul Blast 5. If your opponent has cards that have resist and you cannot retire anything, it sucks. Um, and you kind of have to just play it as a vanilla deck. So it's hard to like manage that. But if you're going to play playing against decks that don't have resist cards, it might be okay. So that's just something to think about. Like, you know, if you're playing against a token deck like with Orphus and they retire all their tokens and their other units before you can do anything, you know, or they have a lot of targets to work with, it does suck. But at least they'll have an empty board for you to use Eugene's skill. So it's a weird deck, but... It can be fun to play against with friends. I highly recommend if you want to build a Eugene deck to play with friends. It's a lot of fun. Um, especially because a lot of people don't know what Eugene cards do. So they're just kind of sitting there like, what do you mean my board is gone? You know, so it's just fun to play with. And then obviously, if you're just like a trigger god, or if you know someone who's just a trigger sack, recommend them this deck because they will love this then. <laughs> All right. I think I've said enough about this deck. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. Uh, if you got any other comments, questions, I would love to hear some more feedback about other people's way that they built this deck because I really want to make this deck as fun as possible. It feels like a really good joke prank deck that can go off unintentionally. So I want to get some feedback on that as well. Thanks again for watching today's video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.